<clears throat> Hi, it's Jamie Pendleton, and we are back in my bathroom, believe it or not. Remember it used to be green? Now it's a beautiful fawn beige color, and I absolutely love it. It does, however, show everything that I hit on it. Even if I get my foot to my foot out of the tub, then I get water on the wall, and it stripes a little bit. So as far as the collar being protected of dirt, or if I hit my makeup case on the wall, yeah, it shows everything. So I do suggest keeping a touch-up, a little uh, Tupperware thing of touch-up paint and a poly brush taped to it. So you can go around and just kind of hit touch-ups. But other than that, I absolutely love the collar. It's great for the farmhouse styling. You can see here yesterday I just painted all my trim and my uh, boards. Uh, my tub, I'm getting ready to put the uh, uh, farmhouse style um, tub surround on it. I didn't like the stone that I put on it, so I'm going to do something else here. And then I've got some sliding barn doors that I'm putting over the window. So um, the tile work's all done behind you, the new faucet's in, um, everything's ready. I accidentally hit the vanity with some paint. I had painted down that side of the wall, the vanity, and I had put the painter's tape on. And I got in a hurry and I came over here and I thought that I had the painter's tape on it. The cabinet's such a dark color, and with my vision not being able to see colors, uh, splitting dark colors apart, I just assumed the paint was, or the, the tape I had put on, but I didn't. So I got, so I also like, did, went down like that and then I went to go pull off the tape and I realized I didn't have tape on that side of the vanity. So now I have to, um, use my thumbnails and scrape off all that paint. So, um, so anyway, that's where we're at in the remodel. Everything is done, except for, I'm gonna hang the mirror back up. I, I, I repainted the light, and I'll show that to you here in just a minute, and I hung some uh, jewels off of it, some crystals. Same for the wall sconces, I hung some crystals on those. Same for the other bathrooms. I just gave everything some bling and some fresh paint, repainted all the trim. Um, so yeah, I've got the whole house inside painted, and I had the outside of the house professionally power washed. So the siding, the windows are done, the, the tracks in the windows, and everything, all that's done. They power washed my uh, and bleached my sidewalks and my driveway, and my patios, my deck, anything that showed any sign of green or anything like that. You probably noticed your house or your apartment building or whatever you're in. You might notice more green or mold this year. It's because we had a very wet fall here in the Midwest. So I don't know about your part of the country, but here in Central Indiana, it was very wet. And we live around cornfields, and I have a lot of landscape. So a lot of green mold on, on the siding and stuff. So we had all that power wash. The house just sparkles and looks like brand new. The buds are coming out on my trees. I, am, I just can't wait for all the orchard and everything to come into bloom. Now you ask me. Why am I doing this? We're doing it because, and we have waited six months for this video, by the way, to go up. Um, I, and I just finished painting the front bedroom, and I just have to paint the trim and the closet door in his office. And I'm done on that whole two-thirds of the house. Almost done in here. But I wanted to decorate a little bit because we're putting the house for sale. That's right, we're selling the house. Um, so if you're interested and you're in the area, let me know. The neighborhood is really happening here, so I'm really excited about that. Um, about probably 45, maybe 55 houses have gone up around us in the last two years. So, um, but the other good news is, and that we've waited, for those of you who are on my Facebook and my Twitter and my Instagram, you already know this. But everybody that's just on my YouTube and since I haven't made a video in six months, you're wondering, where have you been, Jane? Why are you not out there sharing the gospel? Why aren't you doing your canning? Uh, where have you been? I'm sticking with you until you tell me, because um, you know it's going to be a big surprise. I'm going to give some of you some hints here and there, but no, I bought a farm. I bought a farm. We, we bought a farm. We bought a farm. Um, that's what we've been working on and um, just going through some other personal issues uh, that we can't talk about, but um, don't worry. John and I are fine. Uh, just some family members who have not had the best of health. And then we've had three grandbaby girls come boom, 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 which you know I'm excited about after losing my first two grandbabies. So we're very excited. Now we have 13 grandbabies and 11 of them are girls. Uh, I'm sorry, 10 of, them, 10 of them are girls, three of them are boys. So we are just elated. And the last three came in the last three months. 
So we are just boom, boom with little girls and babies, and I practically moved in with my daughter, both John and I both did, and we were in the middle of the house for my mom, and I said, you know what, this is great. We'll just go ahead and move our stuff in with her, little by little. We got two warehouses to move everything else into, and we'll just keep the basic furniture and a few clothes here for if we ever do want to spend the night here while it's for sale. So that's where we're at. Bought a farm, and I'm gonna put some pictures of it at the end of this video. And, and we'll take you, I mean, I've made videos, so I just gotta edit some videos and show you the farm. But we've just been so busy uh, helping everybody and helping them through uh, some health issues in the family that we just haven't had time for filming. And I decided to set it aside. Family comes first. So just making a long story short, and, um, and so when you wonder a bit, we, we want to thank you for staying with us. Absolutely thank you for staying with us. And as a treat, I'm going to teach you guys how to do something today in a do-it-yourself video that's going to save you somewhere, anywhere, probably between, I'd say between $75 and $150, if not more, depending on where you live and how elaborate that you make this, okay? But today I'm going to teach you how I make my pipe shelving, okay? Now I'm not going to do the big ones like I do for people's kitchens. I'm just going to do a small one here that fits right over here over the top of the tub. I'm just going to put some glass jars on it. It's just going to be probably about uh, maybe eight inches deep total. The shelves are going to be about six inches, maybe five and a half, six inches deep. And um, and I got one board. I'm going to rip it in half and we're going to it's a pre-finished board that's thick, pre-finished, comes in different colors, um, got it at Menards, and um, and then of course I got all the piping. So that's where we're at. The next video, we're going to teach you how to put together this uh, pipe shelf. And I'm just very, very, very excited to show you how I do it. And um, I'm trying to bring you some unique videos that other people haven't done. It's very hard to find videos that people haven't done. But it's just like my palette garden. Once I did it, everybody else started doing it. So every time I had a video hit, you know, 100,000 subscribers, which that one now has almost 2 million uh, views, um, then people would start copying it or stealing my work and putting the videos and trying to make money off my work. So it took me almost a month to get all the videos down online that were under my, you know, that cut me out in the beginning, but showed my hands and me talking and doing it. So I got all that done. I want everybody to know these, this is standard YouTube licensing and, um, and, uh, no, you, you cannot copy my videos. You can, you can repost them and help me out, but you cannot use them to make money on your own channel. So, um, and, I, and I've said that before, I've said that from the very beginning, and I'm going to say it a few times. Um, as far as the haters go that are out there, I have just not had an issue, or for whatever reason I'm not seeing it. Um, and I do want to clarify one more thing before we move forward on the next video here. This is a two-part video. One's telling you where I've been, the other one's going to tell you how to do it yourself, pipe shelving. Alright, it's a two-part video. So I just want to tell you this, and it's very important that you know this. Uh, one of the reasons why I stepped away from YouTube for six months was not my choice. I got shadow banned, and I got my pay cut twice, down 45% twice. And they started charging me $20 to even upload a video. And I had triple the number of subscribers, but they were blocking even my top two, two, million, two million view videos. They were blocking me. Um, because I was sharing Christ. And I put God in the title and they would give me the yellow dollar sign. Now, they're trying to say they didn't shadow ban anybody for their conservative point of views. All of you guys know I don't talk politics on my channel. I do not. I will not. You know, I love everyone. I, I've told you this from the very beginning when we all do communion together. I've said this, that um, you're just, nobody's going to steal my Jesus. It's my faith. I have a right to it. It's freedom of religion. I respect your faith. And if you have any questions for me, you can always ask me. We are a non-denominational uh, faith. We believe that everyone, I don't care who you are, we're all sinners and we are all made in God's image. And we love you all very much. And I can't even love you as much as God loves you. So I can only imagine how much that is. Imagine song. I can only imagine that song. 
But um, but and I do, and I've been listening to, to church songs like that and K Love and things like that. I'm not advertising them. I'm just saying I've been listening to those kind of things just to build me up. Um, you know, God is on the move, on the move. You know, Hallelujah, God is on the move in a mighty way. That kind of thing has just kept me going through these dark days, and we all have them. And I do suffer from depression once in a while, so I have to stay very solitude and in prayer. And this time during my depression, I wasn't able to do it that way, so I had to find a new way to get through it. So I went to the doctor, and um, and I was able to not get on medicine. I was actually able to put myself around people that were more positive, that let their light shine, and I was able to relight my flame again, which is sometimes, that's what works, found out that worked for me. So um, you have to do what works for you, and that worked for me, and then when the grandbaby started coming, I was just too busy to, I mean, how could you be depressed with newborns in your arms, you know what I mean? Um, and it's hard, because my, da my daughter-in-law got a postpartum depression and it's scary and I've suffered from postpartum depression it's very scary because you know it's not you you know these thoughts in your head are not you um, I just suggest on postpartum depression go get some counseling go talk to someone find somebody to babysit for an hour a day every day or take your baby to the park and I know it's hard when it's winter time if you're in a cold climate but go to the YMCA Find a way to go swimming. Find a way to get some of that burn up energy out, because it's because you're so tired from those things, from the baby. And let me tell you, everybody's like, well, you're just a grandmother. You're not the mom. What do you know? No, we have eight children. We have thirteen grandchildren, and I have been living with my daughter, and the baby has been sleeping with me for the reasons of the health issue of the other child. So, um, so I've had the baby with me for most of the time. John and I in our room every night for the last seven weeks probably, seven to eight weeks. And I was with her when I was her labor coach. So um, this is when family steps up. This is when you find out what you're made of. And um, and that's where we've been. We've just, we've had, we love you guys to death. I've tried to keep contact with a lot of you who are dire fans from Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. And I've tried to send you things so I'm hoping that you've went out and shared where we've been with others, and I know a lot of you have. So that's why so many people are still subscribing and haven't unsubscribed, because they knew uh, through word of mouth what we were going through, and that we'd be back. And we are back at, at a, at a part-time level right now. And I've been on YouTube for almost seven years, maybe longer. And I mean, my, our videos have millions of views, and we have, we're pushing 100,000 subscribers, so share the videos, help us out. It's not about the money for me. It's just, YouTube is something that helps me stay connected to other adults and younger groups of uh, children that maybe are going off to college, uh, maybe that want to hear the gospel, or maybe just want to learn how to do. Maybe you're just young, just got married, and want to learn how to can and you also want to do some do-it-yourself projects. Um, I also was getting angry because I had people going down my list of videos and they were making all of my videos that I was making and then they weren't giving me any credit, which that's fine, that's what I make the videos for, but they were making money off my ideas. And that was getting frustrating. And then it's just really hard to find new ideas. And one day my husband told me, he said, Jane, you do things that no other woman does. You're a custom home builder, you're an architect, you're a plans designer, CAD programmer. You can do these things. And so you just need to go out there and just do it. And I'll film you doing it. And you can film me doing it when he does his electrical and plumbing. And, um, and we can just keep going. And so with building a new house, we bought the five acres. Um, I did a development, another development. The development is called Stonebridge. It's in the county, just right across the county that we're in now. Taxes there are a little bit higher, but they're a little bit less because it's farm ground. And, um, and then our house is going to be on five acres. And uh, my house plan is actually called Stonebridge as well. And I designed it, drafted it up with a pencil and a big sheet of paper. You know, y'all know I've been working on it for a long time. And guess what? For those who remember, the farm we tried to buy that didn't happen. And the Lord told me to buy the land between two stones. 
Well, that didn't happen. And so for three years we've been sitting here going, we can't find any land around here. Nothing is for sale under two hundred fifty thousand per 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 three quarters to a half acre. You know, what are we going to get? What are we going to get? So then we thought, okay, let's just go outside our scope a little bit further, and let's just start knocking on doors. Let's drive up and down in grids every day and just see what we see and talk to who we talk. And that's what happened. And um, uh, some farmers passed away. Their daughter was going to build on the land. She met someone and got married. She moved in, I don't know, somewhere in town, or maybe they built a house elsewhere, I don't know. But the new well was in, the 400 amp service is there, the 60 by 60 barn is there, pole building is there, the newer silo, huge silo is there, and that's going to be my office. And then John bought me for a surprise, he bought me great big letters to go on outside the silo that says Stonebridge. And then, of course, the company. Um, we're going to change. I'm still going to be at Jamie's Custom Homes, but our, um, but our development is Stonebridge. So I'm really happy about that. That's something I've done on my own. I wanted to do this. It's what I do, and it was so wonderful bringing John along for the ride. He really enjoyed doing it as well, and I think he learned a lot. I mean, can you imagine teaching a surgeon, plumber, an electrician something new? He really, really loved going and meet, going to the meetings and doing these things. And I thought, great, you can go to the meetings. I'll just tell you what I want done then because I got, I got this other stuff to do. So that worked out. And, um, you know, he, he was a team player. And when you're, when, you're, when you're team players, that makes a really big difference in your marriage, I think, or in your partnership at work even. So uh, marry a team player, okay? Put that on your checklist. If you haven't gotten married yet, is he or she a team player? Check them out first because it's our Christians, they're team players, they love the Lord, they love you. You cut yourself a match, honey. Don't put it off. Grab it while you can because let me tell you something. I was single for 12 years, 12 years after, 12 years in my adulthood, not 12 years. I got married at 12, no. Um, I was single for almost 12 years and um, it took me a while to want to date and find and marry someone. There just wasn't a lot to choose from. So when I met John, it was like, he's too, my dad even said, he's too good to be true. But, um, but no, look at him in there now. He's fixing my bed because the bed collapsed. But, um, but, and he's going to let me uh, kind of take some time off today. I'm going to film this video for you all. I got backup batteries here. So, <laughs> but no, I, I wish this was a two-way conversation. I, you know, I need to do one of these live videos where you guys can like, talk to me and I can answer you back or whatever. I'm planning on doing some of those this year. Um, have a lot going on. John and I have, um, I knocked all my teeth loose again. And this time I did a real number on them and they can't save them now. I've spent thousands of dollars trying to save my teeth. I'm in construction, it happens. I got hit in the mouth with a pipe. It was my fault. And, um, yeah, I feel like it's ruined my smile. I don't really smile at people now. I'm like this, little kids seem to look and stare at me, but I'm getting it fixed. And um, they're just really, I mean, they've healed, they've healed up, but I can't hardly really talk. I try to talk, but I can't talk. But it's very difficult and John he's had his share of teeth problems now he's getting ready to get his second crown this month uh, he had a cracked tooth my son-in-law is going through a lot of tooth problems and some other members are we all know when it rains it pours when it comes time to going to the dentist and I just hate going and um, but I'm getting all new teeth across here and, uh, and then eventually down here um, I just try to save my teeth because I've never had a cavity so I just tried to save my teeth, but now they told me that I have such a bone loss that that is why I was, that's why I had 22 broken bones since I was in high school. Um, I do have a early form of maybe like osteoporosis, I guess, and, and, um, and, it's, and it's in my mouth and it's in my jaw. And, um, and it explains why I broke my jaw twice. I mean, I really had some problems. And in doing that, that's messed up my teeth you know, to get all that fixed. So, and I mean, I've had rough jobs. I mean, I'm, I'm a criminologist. It's what my, my master's degree is actually in criminology and my doctorate's in divinity. So um, we share the science that backs the Bible. So, and you can argue that if you want, go ahead. I mean, I have yet to have anybody show me a better 
a better route. So that's why I believe what I believe. So, um, and I told you, I love everyone. I, you're all my angels. I don't care what your faith is. I have faith in you if you keep your faith in me. And I said I'd be back, and I am back. And I want to thank everyone who has supported us during this time. Um, your prayers. A lot of you know that we got kicked out of the hospital chapel for being in there too long praying. And I just, um, I didn't lose my cool. You'd be very proud of me. I didn't lose my cool, but I did lose, I did use my education, but I didn't lose my cool. And I am going to agree with the rest of you. And in the, in the poll, the folks that I took what I should do, they all said that I should go to higher up administration and say something. When they told us that we should go to another hospital to pray on the day my husband was having his jaw surgery. And I had met with my, um, you know, when you're doing business, you can't stop doing business. If someone's in surgery that you love, you go to the hospital, you're in surgery, you go to the chapel to pray. Well, the lady who was a really good Christian and a Sunday school teacher, she said she would come to me because I had to get something notarized. And her husband was my surveyor. He had just had double uh, bypass surgery. And so we'd gotten to know each other, wonderful woman. And I said, well, we can go down and pray for our husbands together. Pray for world peace and the things that are going on in the world. We can pray for peace and we can do this together. And I, you can also, I'll sign this paper for you and you can go ahead and notarize it for me. And I'll pay you to notarize it for me while we're there as well. But I said, I cannot pay you inside the church because I don't do business like that inside the church. I have to pay you outside the church and the chapel. And she said, no, 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 you don't have to pay me anything. It's part of the services that you're going to be paying for with my husband and does the surveys next month. So I saw, you know, on the four corners, I'd be resurveyed for this development. And I said, that's more than fair, but, you know. So we decided to get together at the hospital. She was in Frankfurt, and I was in Westfield, Indiana. And so we headed to Lebanon, which is where my house is. It's not where I'm living. I'm living in Westfield. But so we went back to the house, this house. And I got cleaned up and dressed for the day. I was pretty muddy and dirty. and then. I met her just two blocks down the road at Witham Memorial Hospital. And a volunteer came in and opened the door and asked us, didn't they ask us to leave, leave? She just said, who are you and what is your affiliation? Why are you here? And she, apparently the next day we found out it's because she saw this yellow envelope and saw me sign something and her notarize it. No money changed hands. And like I said, it's like a rock star that travels. I'm not calling myself a rock star. I'm saying it's like, it's like uh, the president when he travels. It, you know, sometimes you've got to follow him around to get his signature because the schedule's tight. And so she was helping me out because I was on a very tight business schedule, trying to get all these crews working and lined up so people would have jobs. And I still wanted to be at the chapel where I could pray for my husband during his surgery and still be involved in that prayer. And so we got on our knees and we prayed and the lady came in the second time and she said, no, really, I want to know who you are and what your affiliation is. And I said, what happened? And, um, you know, I forgive people really easily, but, and, and I forgive them, but to be volunteers at hospitals where people are sick and say that the chapel's only for staff and patients. Patients have a hard time getting down into the lobby to pray. It's the families that go in there to pray. And my husband was a patient. He was an outpatient that day from his doctor, which is in that hospital, that sent him on emergency care to IU uh, Dental School and uh, emergent, uh, emergency uh, surgery in the, in the jaw area there. And um, but anyway, his infection, it was very dangerous because his infection could have hit what it ended up being had a, a microscopic chip, uh, cracked tooth in two places. It was like cracked in two places. And so he had filling in there, they had to drill that out, drill down into the bone. He was on a lot of antibiotics. He was on two rounds of antibiotics. And uh, because he has diabetes, that can be very dangerous. So, um, so he's got another appointment tomorrow. He is, seems to be feeling better, but he was in a lot of pain. And to tell us that we were in there too long praying and that we were holding up the chapel from staff and patients going in and that we shouldn't pray there and that we should have went to the hospital where her husband had had his double bypass a couple months prior. 
and I just thought, you're telling me I should go pray at another hospital in another city because it's just not convenient for us to be praying in this chapel, which by the way was empty and has been empty every time I have went there. The only time that I've went there and I've got something going or prayed with a family that had me come there, I just, I mean, I'm sure they use it. I'm not there all the time, but every time I've been there, I've not seen them use it. And, um, and I'm sure the staff who would use it would be glad to see other people using it as well. So, I mean, Christians welcome other Christians and in sickness and in health, we help one another. We don't shoot each other out of the chapels and the uh, buildings that we, that we, um, that we socialize in. We're supposed to do that. We're supposed to share the gospel. And, and helping each other through these hard times and even even doing business with each other. You're helping other Christians out. This is a good thing. Um, helping each other prosper. Helping each other. Building up the world. Instead of the world building you up. Building up the world so that it can build others up and yourself. It's a totally acceptable concept. And it works if we were all just sharing it and do it. So, um, so I got a little bit depressed over that because I thought I prayed a lot and finally the Lord actually didn't answer me, he answered John and, and uh, just told John to tell me that this is just part of living in the world and that some people just don't see it, even other Christians, they just don't see it. And it's not that he's mad at that person, she just has a lot on her plate and people yelling at her too. And, um, and if I caused someone harm, then um, I felt really bad about that part. If I'd gotten her in trouble or if I made someone angry or if I had used the chapel to pray for the sick and, and stuff, if it made them mad. And then about three days later, I got a message from the Lord and the Lord told me, never cease prayer. Never cease prayer. And you can pray anywhere. If they don't want me in that chapel, fine. There are other chapels that will have me there. I can kneel next to my bed. I can, um, the new house I'm going to have like a little altar with a little cross over it so I can duplicate that. So I can start having people in the house to pray um, when they need to pray. I'm going to start welcoming more people into our prayer room or our prayer room. And um, so we can start having like little Bible studies and stuff at our house. So that's something that we built into that. In like a theater room where we can show like pure flicks type movies and some really good nice movies and we can have I don't have teenagers at home anymore but a lot of the people we minister to they do and they'd be welcome to come and watch movies and bring their friends and they'd be safe you know a safe place to go that doesn't include drugs alcohol smoking uh, vape whatever their 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 habit they could fall into they need to fall into good habits and you need good it takes a village right. And I want to be a member of that village. It is a community. And by the way, that's a community hospital, which makes that a community chapel. And I know by reading the plaques on the wall that morning, I just happened, John and I both just happened to be reading a plaque on the wall. And in 1917, I believe it was, uh, Mr. Witham, his name was, uh, it was a strange name, Dark Leather Effort, not Francis, but Franc Prince. Francisus or something like that was his first name with him and he had donated somewhere like fifteen thousand dollars to start the first hospital in our city and in that hospital was a chapel he wanted it to be a Christian environment you know just like a doctor without borders he wanted to welcome people and that chapel was to help people through their grieving process and uh, the pamphlets are there uh, to help people through their grieving processes so um, and I'm trained in all of that but because I travel and I don't have time to be there 24-7, I was told John and I could not be volunteers at that hospital. And she, I want to tell you, she tried to shut the door in my face. I'm going to let someone shut the door in my face just because they got mad because I prayed too long. And she tried to tell me we were in there an hour and a half. Well, we checked our phones and her husband called me. I was still here at home in the bathtub. It took me 10 minutes to get from the bathtub to the church to meet her. We walked in almost within seconds apart from each other. And I also remember her pretty red coat, walking in with her pretty red coat. And she came in, I like the white coat. And I'm like, I like your red coat. <laughs> but I can't wear red because I'm a redhead. It makes my hair look orange. But, and we had this little conversation. It was really cute. And, um, and, and I just remember what time it was on my phone when I left here. So even adding in that 10 minutes when I was still in the tub, it would have only been about 45 minutes to an hour. 
So saying we were in the chapel for an hour and a half, that's absolutely not true. Absolutely, it's impossible. So she embellished the story, and I thought, Dope. you know, embellishment, still lying, you know, it just, and she didn't ask you to leave, and I thought, well, why did she ask me not? Because I told her to, you know, she she wanted to shut that door and not face me because she sent somebody else in there to get rid of us. And I still don't understand what we did wrong. Um, uh, they tried to say we had a manila envelope in our hand and we were conducting business in there. And I said, yeah, I have to because I didn't get to be at work all day today. And this person came to pray with me and she's also a notary. And she notarized some papers for me so I didn't have to run all the way back up to Frankfurt to do it. And she came down from Frankfurt and she did me a favor because she knew what I was going through today. And then when they said, well, you should be praying at her, at her hospital, not ours. I could not believe my ears. I could not believe my ears. Watching this on her knees, I just know that Satan was, was speaking through her fork tongue. And I just, I couldn't be mad at her, but I just rebuked Satan and walked away. Because this is not the same woman that we were gonna volunteer for, the head of the volunteers. I'm sure she's a paid member of the hospital. Um, but she heads up the volunteers. And I wasn't going to say anything because it happened almost a month ago, maybe three weeks ago. I wasn't going to say anything publicly about it. You know, I never do. You know, I never do. This is a first. And uh, I won't even talk about haters on my channel, what they say. I don't do that. I don't want the drama. I'm not like that. And so for me to do it, you know that this was really on my heart. And I just knew at this point, I only cared what the Lord told me to do. Not what anybody else told me to do or what they would do or their advice. I wanted the Lord's advice. So I went into a quiet room and just prayed for, I think my husband would tell you it probably took three days for him to get an answer for our prayer. And then, um, and there was a reason for that. Um, there were other things that we were praying about that I'm going to let someone shut the door in my face just because they got mad because I prayed too long. And she tried to tell me we were in there an hour and a half while we checked our phones and her husband called me. I was still here at home in the bathtub. It took me 10 minutes to get from the bathtub to the church to meet her. We walked in almost within seconds apart from each other. And I still remember her pretty red coat walking in with her pretty red coat. And she came in, I like the white coat. And I'm like, I like your red coat, <laughs> but I can't wear red because I'm a redhead. Makes my hair look orange. And we had this little conversation that was really cute, and, um, and, and I just remember what time it was on my phone when I left here. So even adding in that 10 minutes when I was still in the tub, it would have only been about 45 minutes to an hour. So saying we were in the chapel for an hour and a half, that's absolutely not true. Absolutely, it's impossible. So she embellished the story, and I thought, Dope. you know, embellishment, still lying. You know, it just, and she didn't ask you to leave. And I thought, well, why did she ask me not? Because I told her to, you know, she, she wanted to shut that door and not face me because she sent somebody else in there to get rid of us. And I still don't understand what we did wrong. Um, uh, they tried to say we had a manila envelope in our hand and we were conducting business in there. And I said, yeah, I have to, because I didn't get to be at work all day today. And this person came to pray with me and she's also a notary and she notarized some papers for me so I didn't have to run all the way back up to Frankfurt to do it. And she came down from Frankfurt and she did me a favor because she knew what I was going through today. And then when they said, well, you should be praying at her, at her hospital, not ours. I could not believe my ears. I could not believe my ears. Watching this on her knees, I just know that Satan was, was speaking through her fork tongue. And I just, I couldn't be mad at her but I just rebuked Satan and walked away. Because this is not the same woman that we were gonna volunteer for, the head of the volunteers. I'm sure she's a paid member of the hospital, um, but she heads up the volunteers. And I wasn't gonna say anything, because it happened almost a month ago, maybe three weeks ago. I wasn't gonna say anything publicly about it. You know I never do. You know I never do, this is a first. And uh, I won't even talk about haters on my channel, what they say. I don't do that, I don't want the drama, I'm not like that. And so for me to do it, you know that this was really on my heart. And I just knew at this point, I only cared what the Lord told me to do. Not what anybody else told me to do or what they would do or their advice. I wanted the Lord's advice. So I went into a quiet room and just prayed for, I think my husband would tell you it probably took three days for him to get an answer for our prayer. And then, um, and there was a reason for that. 
Um, there were other things that we were praying about that, that was in the will of getting fixed as well. Sometimes God's got to fix that spoke on another will in order to come over and fix your engine. It's just, he's got to fix that will or what is the engine? The will, the engine may run, but the, the will's not working. It's not going to go anywhere. So he's got to fix the will. You know, God knows what order he wants to fix things in. That's not up to us. And he will lead us. I always say God calls the, um, God doesn't always just call the qualified. He, he qualifies the called. And sometimes when I'm in prayer, he's qualifying me. Um, to do the right thing. And so that's what we did. Anyway, that's where we've been. We've had a lot going on. I've made a lot of videos, but finally one day I just put down the camera completely said, and no just, more. Uh, I've got too much going on and um, I've made plenty of videos that I could edit and put up. Laptop keeps going down. It's taken me two or three days just to make one short video. Anyway, that's where we've been. That's what we've been doing. So anyway, I'm going to end it now because the battery's low and I have to go to dinner with my family. When I come back, I'm going to show you how to make. I'm going to show you how to make. And all the parts you're going to need to make my pipe shelf, okay? It feels good to be back and it just feels, I can't wait to hear from you guys. And let's let me know that you're still out there and that you want me to stay on YouTube and you want me to keep making these videos. Um, like I said, this one was just because I've been going off. I hadn't posted a video in six months. And I just knew you guys would want an explanation. So I'm giving that to you. And um, yeah, we have a very sick family member. And, um, and, it's, and it's, we're leaving this week again just to take care of the baby, the newborn. So, of course, she's hardly a newborn now. She's been with me for seven weeks. I even have a little bed here, a little co-sleeper next to my bed. So it's been, I, mean, I feel like the new, the, new, the new grandma. I'm feeling it like the new mom would feel it. Um, John and I really, John and I, John's really stepped up to the plate. I'm very proud of my husband. He's really stepped up to the plate. This is the first time we've had a child that he's been home retired. So he's really been a really great grandfather to this child, to these children. And I'm very proud of him. I hope he's proud of me too. <laughs> Anyway, we love you. Be sure to leave a comment below. Be sure and subscribe if you're not. We have some great do-it-yourselves coming up. And, um, and I just can't wait to start teaching you guys to have, to have to do some of these things again. Some projects that will save you sometimes hundreds of dollars, if not more. All right? We love you. Go with God. Blessings.